With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. We always say that something special is happening when we take the podcast on the road for a special edition. And in this episode, it's no exception. And we're not in one, but two locations for a very special announcement. I'm here at the Lee Valley White Water Centre, home to the canoe slalom events of London 2012, of course. And the reason I'm here is that this is the training centre for the next group of athletes officially selected by Team GB for next summer's Olympic Games. Following the 10 sailors recently announced, we can now add British Canoeing's four slalom canoeists to the team sheet. I'm John. And I'm Michael. So whilst John is in Lee Valley to meet and hear from the newest members of the team, I am at the News UK building in central London. This is the location for the official team announcement, which is being made exclusively on the world's biggest sports radio station, Talk Sport. Paris will be my third time reporting for Talk Sport at the Olympics. So let's meet the next four athletes selected by Team GB. This is a special edition of the podcast with British Canoeing. Hi, my name is Mark Ratcliffe. I'm the performance director of Canoe Slalom and Kite Cross team and I'm leading the team towards Paris. Always an important and enjoyable day when you get to actually announce those athletes. They're not quota places anymore, their names on the team sheet. Yeah, super exciting day for the athletes and a long time waiting for it. It's obviously been a couple of years since Tokyo and quite a journey to get here. Obviously number one job, qualifying the places, but then to actually select the athletes into those places through their performances across the season. Some amazing performances. Um, yeah, really cool day. And British canoeing has track record. We know they win medals at this level. So an enjoyable pressure on your shoulders going to Paris? Yeah, we're in a strong position going in. Um, the message is we've got to do the hard work and do that all again after a successful year. It's about preparing on the course, preparing each athlete the best we possibly can and you know, accepting the challenge that comes with that to do our best performances on the day. So, you know, a challenge we're looking forward to. So let's meet the team as British Canoeing named their first four members of Team GB for Paris 2024. Yeah, I'm Joe Clark. I am the Olympic champion from Rio 2016 and I will be competing in Paris 2024 in men's kayak slalom and men's kayak cross. What does it mean to be back, particularly missing out on Tokyo? I think it just makes it that bit more special, really, to be honest. Um, obviously, a lot of ups and downs between Rio and now. Uh, I think it's changed me as a person, but for the better. Uh, it made me more determined, uh, maybe clearer on what I want to achieve. And I think I'm going to this as obviously probably one of the favourites in both events, and that makes it quite exciting. You had a great world championships. I think you're three-time cha- world champion as well in this new event, the Kayak Cross. Yeah, three times, so 21, 22, 23, um, and World number one in kite cross. Uh, so definitely going into the, the games with a, uh, a target on my back, I think, to be honest, uh, as the one to beat. Uh, it's obviously been, since this introduction to Paris 2024, I've, I've gone from strength to strength. Um, yeah, I just find it very exciting. It's a different dynamic for the traditional slalom. You're head to head with three other athletes. And uh, yeah, it just provides a different challenge Rather than it being you versus the course, it's you versus others. Slalom's a bit like, it's a bit finesse really. It's about trying to like dance across the water. And then the kayak cross is very much like 
brute strength, power, like pushing the boat down the course as quickly as you can. You can obviously crash into your other competitors uh, and all that kind of stuff. You mentioned earlier that the selection or non-selection for Tokyo made you a stronger person. Do you find that actually disappointment can make you a better athlete rather than success? Yeah, I mean, it has a weird way of uh, challenging you. And I think those those athletes that have, have overcome disappointment will have had to dig deeper and, and find a different way of getting overcoming hurdles. Uh, and it certainly was for me. I, I was obviously the favourite. I was world number one at the time. It was a big kind of a big hit not to get selected for Tokyo. Um, but I think, in some ways, the, the the pandemic coming along so short so quickly afterwards. It, I mean, it sounds so strange saying it, but it helped me perhaps just because it was kind of put things into perspective that obviously health is very important. Look what's going on in the world right now. Like sport is this amazing thing, but I chase around, like chase gates down a section of white water. Like it's, that's my life. It's a massive part of my life. And I don't want to say it's, that's not important to me, but it kind of really made you think about what is important, what's next. Um, in that period, obviously where our wedding got cancelled and stuff like that. So we got married afterwards. I've had, <clears throat> I've had a son. Uh, so it's kind of all these things put life into perspective. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it's maybe dig that bit deeper, become clearer on those focus on the focus and, and what I want to achieve, and almost reminded me that unfortunately my career won't be forever. So uh, you've got to really push hard in those uh, those good years. Two final questions. You mentioned your son. Has fatherhood changed you in the way you think about sport? Yeah, it's, it's definitely changed me. I think somebody said to me today, how does it feel when that announcement got announced? And I said, I was obviously absolutely buzzing. It's kind of been what I've been working towards so hard for. But I think, I, I joked my wife, I started like laughing that I was going to cry. And then I actually did start crying. And I, and I think it was all the emotion of thinking about like, he was born on the 27th of January and it was the Olympic like selection year. So I was back in a boat like two, three days later and I, th- I felt terrible for it. But I thought I'm doing this for you I'm doing it for me I'm doing it for our family um and yeah to think he'll be like 18 months old and he'll be in the crowd in Paris watching his dad compete like he may not have any memories of it like later on but we'll have all those photos and it'll be an amazing experience for me and for him and my wife and the whole family to to see that it's gonna be very very special and you and Adam Burgess are both in the team what is so special about Stafford and Stone Canoe Club I think there must be something in the water. Um, we actually went back um, at the weekend to go to our club's 50th anniversary, and to think the sports, uh, the club is 50 years old. It's had such good success. Like we're going to Paris 2024 with two Olympians out of four coming from the same club. I don't know the numbers at the club rose after I, I, I competed in Rio, as did as they did when Adam competed in Tokyo. So. I really hope we can and go there and bring back some metal. Well, you certainly have already. We wish you best for Paris. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you very much. Cheers. Hi, I'm Mary Franklin, a GB canoe slalom athlete. Uh, and today we're announcing selection to the Paris Olympic team, which is really cool. And confirmation, it's C1 and the new cross event? Yeah, so C1 that I went to in Tokyo. Um, and then, yeah, the new kite cross event, which is exciting. And I'm looking forward to sitting on a different start line and have an opportunity at two medals. It is now officially kite cross across everything. New discipline, it's a bit different to slalom, plastic boats, big inflatable poles, four people going down the course at the same time. A little bit more of a battle, more of a fight. But I think it's been really, it's been received really well. And I think people have really find it exciting to watch. Tell us about Tokyo. When you look back and, and reflect on your success. Uh, yeah, it's weird. Um, I think there's a lot's happened between then and now. Um, but it's really cool. I think the opportunity to like, go back and do something hopefully even better. And I think being able to experience a games that has the normal atmosphere around it as opposed to Tokyo. I think Tokyo was like a nice stepping stone, kind of had everything except for the spectators. And then Paris is obviously going to be pretty mega and it being so close to London, like a lot of my family are coming across. And it's it's nice to come in kind of off the back of the Olympic medal at the last games and then being world champion as well. Like, it's a nice lead into it, but anything can happen in slalom, so we'll see. Now, I know you celebrated by getting married as well after Tokyo, but how has life changed as well, being an Olympic medalist? Um, Not as much as you might think, um, truthfully. Um, I think it's kind of one of those things, I think it was probably a bit because the games was in COVID and everything that you came out of, it was like, oh, well, can you go do things? Because it's like, well, COVID's still a thing. Um, and for us, the games end up being put in our like normal schedule. So I still had my world champions at world championships that year. So I had like still a really busy schedule after the games. So I wasn't really able to 
fully take in, but I got to do some really cool things. And I think having that title against my name of being an Olympic silver medalist is just amazing. And I think people still recognize that. And it's definitely something that feels like it just stays with you for life. Does it make you want to go there and go the next stage, the next medal? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think kind of getting to experience it for the first time in Tokyo and kind of getting that sense of what it takes to win a medal at the Olympics, I think definitely have that hunger to try and take that one step further and try and take a medal off Jess, maybe. Um, and with Kite Cross as well, I think trying to push to kind of up my level in that a little bit and push for the medals there would be really cool. Like the idea of being able to come away from the Games with two medals is crazy and it's a really cool opportunity that I wasn't sure I was ever going to really get. 2023 was a, a very good year and, and the World Championships were here at Lee Valley at the moment. The success there? Yeah, it was a crazy good championships for us as a team um, to come away with like four world champions and like Joe to do it in both boats, Kim and Kai across and me and C1 was really cool. And then you like Kim medaled and we had really good team medals as well. And I think that everyone really enjoyed the atmosphere of it. And it kind of, I think even though it was like quite a long schedule, I think everyone felt like it was cut, like people came in and it was a really high energy everywhere and it was really fun and I really enjoyed racing the whole thing. And you mentioned about the home advantage of, of Lee Valley. There's been a lot of talk about Paris being quite close, but it's not a home games. <laughs> and no, it's not. It is very close. And I think um, in canoeing, home advantage is massive um, because you get used to the water, you kind of understand it. And that was kind of obvious with the success that we had at the Worlds as well. Um, but I think Paris is close enough, like it's like a six hour drive, whatever, to get there. So we've spent a lot of time there um, and we plan on spending a lot of time there. So we're really trying to get as much of that home advantage as we can and just really try and feel settled and understand the environment and understand the water and allow us all to be confident to be able to go and perform. My name is Kimberly Woods. I'm going to go to Paris in kayak and kayak cross. Firstly, what does it mean to be selected again for Team GB? It's definitely a special feeling, um, something that would only come once to some people, maybe not ever. So I feel really privileged that um, I'm going to a second Olympics and it's going to be very different this time because there's no COVID um, restrictions. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it and to have the team um, selected with me. And you've had a heck of a 2023. We're here at Lee Valley White Water Centre. I think you won four medals at the World Championships. Yeah, I did. And when I did the math, I was the most successful athlete at um, that championships with the four out of the five medals I could have got. So it was, yeah, an incredible thing to be a part of. And hopefully we inspired some little kids to take the sport up. I know there was a lot of kids here. So, yeah, to be that and also become world champion um, for the first time ever individually. And that being a home is very special. So the obvious question is, can you do it in Paris? I 100% have a lot of confidence that I can, um, but kite cross is kite cross. It's very grueling, it's very um, physical and competitive, and I know that the girls who will be competing um, there will definitely change the game again. Um, I'm trying to just try and stay ahead of it, um, and hopefully the, the skills that I've, I've taken from this year and the confidence I can take on to, to Paris. But it's going to be tricky, but I'm, I'm all there for it. Um, as we say, you're competing in, in the K1, which is then very different from the kayak cross, as, as you say. And being the world champion, I assume, means you're also there to be shot down. Yeah, I definitely feel like I've got a target on my back a little bit now. But everyone knows the sport and um, everyone knows that anything can happen. And I think there's a, that level of respect there for when something can go wrong. It's like, oh, like you feel for those people. So um, that's what I love about it. And yeah, with the kayak, it's, it's, I'm off on the first two days of racing in the schedule. So, and then I have five days off. What I'll do in those five days, I have no idea yet. Um, but I'll definitely try and fill my time. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to then be there and have another shot at it. You mentioned as well the difference between your first Olympics and your second Olympics. What are you really looking forward to? The kind of team feel. Um, we had a team feel last time, but it was very much like make sure we don't get ill <laughs> and trying to keep each other safe. Uh, whereas this time, I think it's going to be a bigger build up. It's practically a home games. Um, it's only six hours to drive there from here, from London. So it's not that far away and we'll have family and friends there. And um, we had Mark England um, talking to us about the fact that we can have those experience and those our family friends with us. and did make me tear up a little bit just thinking about having my family there at the end of a race. Um, it's a really good sport and it makes such a big difference. I definitely feel like I'm coming into a prime. I reckon I've got another 10 years in me, but um, we don't know what's going to happen in a few years' time. Anything can. Might have a family, might have do little bits here and there, you know, um, life. So, yeah, I feel really grateful for the position I'm in now and um, being 
funded by lottery funding and, and things like that. So I'm, I feel really fortunate I can do this as a day job. I'm Adam Burgess, canoe slalom athlete. I compete in the C1. And today, yeah, been nominated to compete at Paris 2024. It's so important to me that I got selected for this Games. Um, I was so disappointed that my family couldn't be there last time around. Um, they've been on this journey since I was 10 years old with me. You know, they deserve this experience just as much. So can't wait to share it with them this time. And also, you know, it's a chance for redemption. That fourth place finish last time around. 0.16 off the podium, that number is seared into my brain. It still gets me up sometimes at night. Um, yeah, I, um, I can't wait for what lies ahead. They say it's the worst place to finish, is it? Um, certainly to start with, it was. Um, you know, I, I've come to terms with it and uh, I've kind of reframed it in my head that I'm actually quite grateful for it now. That, you know, when I came home, it was, it was very difficult kind of adjusting back to the real world again after such an experience. And I absolutely loved the pursuit of that Olympic gold medal for the last 20 odd years. And the fact that I finished fourth just means that I'm still on that journey, basically. I'm still in that pursuit. And um, yeah, it's, it's just really exciting. So the good news is in the team, the bad news is you seem to have something wrong with your arm. <laughs> yeah, um, small accident in training last week. Um, I've actually... It is only my finger. Um, I'm in a cast at the moment and a sling. It looks a bit overkill, but it's just because I had surgery yesterday. The finger's been pinned. Um, you know, I'm going to be out for four weeks, maybe. Um, it's, it's, it's the right time. One of my teammates had a broken bone this time last year and went on to be world champion. So, um, yeah, it's not so bad. There's plenty of fitness work and things we can do in the meantime. And, yeah, I'm very much seeing this as on the way to Paris, not in the way. Well, we wish you luck with that and re recovering from that. Stafford and Stone Canoe Club. Why is it that so many Team GB canoeists come from there? What is it in the water, literally? Yeah, there is something in the water. The River Trent in Stone, it's, uh, it's a magic place. Um, we actually celebrated our club's 50th anniversary, um, the weekend just gone. And yeah, the fact that we've got two Olympians on the team. We make, we make up half the team from that club. Joe and I, you know, we started a year apart. We've been in a group together as kids, we went to school together. Um, it really is an amazing achievement for the club. Um, a lot of that comes down to our first coach, Andy Neve, actually getting us involved in the sport in the first place. But I think what it is about Stafford and Stone is the reason why we're so successful. I mean, A, the river, and there's no white water in Stone. It kind of looks very unassuming, it's like a stream, but it's the perfect place to learn all the basics and it's like treacle. So what Joe and I have, I think that just raw speed, it just, just generally makes you fast learning to paddle in an environment like that. But then also, because we've always had, we've got so many paddlers at every stage of the journey, there's always that next person to chase. So when I was first coming through the ranks, it's, you know, I'm looking at people that, they're just in the division higher than me or something like that. And then there's someone at the club who, they've just made the junior team for the first time. So it's not like, so I think it's very important still that I go back to the club and represent and be that figure and but the kids don't just look up to me and see the fact that I'm an Olympian and it's this really far away thing is they've got someone to look up to at every stage on that pathway and I think it just makes it really believable that we can go on and achieve these things. So you're in the C1, mm -hmm. better than fourth this time please? Yeah absolutely I mean um, my aim is to win it and, and to really win it in style I think we've got to shoot for the stars here um, there's a lot of players in my event um, and really, you know, it's just a privilege to be out there with them racing. Um, but no, I really believe that I can do it. I love the course out there. Um, I took first blood at our um, World Cup this year. I won the heats there, first competitive run with everyone. So, uh, you know, we know I've got pace and um, yeah, just can't wait. Last question, I know you're a coffee lover. Mm -hmm. The streets of Paris, will you be uh, frequenting the uh, odd coffee house maybe after success? Yeah, I mean, France as a whole doesn't have the best reputation for coffee, but um, Paris now, their specialty scene is getting pretty good. Um, Terre de Café would uh, be my tip. <laughs> There's a few of them around in the city. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Terre's, T-E-R-R-E-S, coffee land, I believe it means. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we'll certainly do that. And we wish you all the best of luck in Paris. Cool. Awesome. Thank you very much. So those are the first four canoeists picked by Team GB for the Olympics next summer. This is a special episode of the podcast with British Canoeing. 
Let's get an update on Team GB's preparations now with Chef de Mission, Mark England. Four new athletes we're adding to the 10 sailors that we announced uh, only a couple of weeks back so now with a grand total of 14 uh, in Team GB which is terrific and and you know this this group I stood in front of them this morning and I, I said I don't think that we could ever wish to have four stronger performance focused athletes uh, coming into the team all four are world champions all four have been to Olympic Games before Joe Clark has won a gold medal in 2016 at the Rio Games and Mallory Franklin won a, a terrific silver in Tokyo last time round. But all four are Olympians and they're experienced and they've been through a pretty tough um, route to be selected today so this is a great day for them. They did so well at the World Championships yeah. here at Lee Valley. Can they do that in Paris? Because there is a home advantage of course which we've had. There is a home advantage in, in a couple of sports, one of which is um, canoe slalom. You need to spend time on the water, um, getting used to the, the different configurations of the, the course. Um, sailing is another good example of you know, the wind and the water and the tide. Uh, but our athletes are spending some, some significant time on the water over in, in, in Paris. So the course is up and running there. Uh, they're quite used to it, which is good news. Um, and uh, yeah, we, you know, we're very hopeful. Um, and it's a bit more than a hope that the, these athletes can bring, bring back a, a, a number of medals. Well, congratulations again to Joe Clark, Mallory Franklin, Kimberly Woods and Adam Burgess, officially selected and on the train to Paris 2024. There's still the opportunity for British canoeing to name more athletes, with the sprint canoeists yet to be announced. You can keep up to date with all the latest British canoeing news on their website or on social media by following at British Canoeing. This has been a special edition of the podcast with British Canoeing, recorded at Lee Valley Whitewater Centre and here at the News UK building in central London, where the official team announcement was made live on Talk Sport. You can always find us online at anythingbutfooty.com and message us from there. Check out our socials and make sure you follow Anything But Footy for all the news in the build-up to Paris 2024. Sports Social Podcast Network. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.